right. Chapter one, lesson seven. Today we're going to talk about a constant rate of change. Constant rate of change. Now what you will see from me is that when we talk about change, I'm going to use a triangle. Okay. All right, so let's first of all, um, so we've been talking about proportions and we've been talking about whether something's proportional or not. And we know it's proportional if it's a straight line and it goes through a zero, zero. When the graph is a straight line, we call it a linear graph or a linear function. And that basically means it shows that there is a constant rate of change. If it's going to be a straight line, no matter what two points that I choose throughout that graph, it's going to have a constant rate of change. It shows a rate of change that is constant between the two quantities. B slash T is going to be between, okay? the two quantities, because we're always comparing two items, right? X and Y, we compare two different quantities. So it shows a rate of change that is constant between the two different quantities. A constant rate of change is also called, now we call them different things. You're going to see tomorrow we're going to talk about the slope. So if it has a constant rate of change, it's also known as, it could also be known as the constant of proportionality. <laughs> the constant of proportionality. Now that happens when it goes through zero, zero, and it's a straight line, right? Or it also could be known as the slope, which we'll talk about tomorrow. So constant rate of change is also known as the constant rate, the constant of proportionality and also called the slope. To find the constant rate of change, we're going to look at it in a graph and we're going to look at it in a table. It's your change in your y, meaning you're going to subtract your two different y's, and it over your change in your x. Are you going up or are you going down? And when I write that, you're going to see me do this. Triangle over Y, triangle over X, that just means change. And basically what you do is you subtract the second Y quantity minus the first Y quantity, right? You're going to subtract to figure it out, not unless you could do it in your head. And you take the second X quantity and you subtract it from the first X quantity. All right, so the best way to show you this would be to do it in an example. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie the table and the graph together. All right, so example one. So this is going to be a car wash. And I'm going to create an XY table. Now the X is going to represent the number of cars. And the Y is going to uh, represent the cost. So this is going to be my X. This is going to be my Y because when I graph, I have X and Y, right? So here's what the numbers are. So we're going to go by fives. 5, 10, 15, 20. So 5 cars is going to cost $40. 10 cars is going to cost 80. 15 is going to cost 120. And 20 is going to cost 160. Okay? Now, I want to find the constant. I'm also going to graph this. So I want to find the constant rate of change. So when I do that, I'm going to find what is my change in my y over my change in my x. That's how I find it. Right? So what you do is you go, here's your y. What's happening with your y? Hopefully you're seeing you're adding 40. If you can't see that, subtract this from this. Right? 80 take away 40 is 40. And then to find what your change in x is, 10 take away 5 if you can't see it. Right? is 5. So you could see that the x is going by 5's, it's increasing by 5's, and the y's are increasing by 40. So your change in y over your change in x is positive 40 over 5, which you know you could reduce, always make sure you simplify it, to 8 over 1. 
Now remember, the Y represents the cost and the X represents the number of cars. So this would be $8 for every one car. That's the constant rate of change. Okay. We also notice that this is the unit price. It's the unit price because the denominator is one. We're figuring out the amount for one. Now when we look at this, let's graph this. Because so I also want to show you something else for the unit rate. So this is how you find the unit rate when you write it as a fraction. But let's graph this. So the X is going to be the number of cars, right? Number cars. And we're going to go by five. So here's zero. Here's five, 10, 15, 20. Here we go. I'll move it. There we go. And this is going to be cost. The Y is going to be cost in dollars. That's our Y. And let's go by, no, let's go by, we got to go up to what, 200? No, 160. I oh, know, let's go up by tens maybe? Yeah, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. No, nope, we're not going to make it. We're going to have to go by 20s. So 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160. And I could keep going. But I'm going to stop there. Okay, so I have to graph 5 and 40, 10. Remember, this is our X and our Y. I'm sorry, maybe I'm going too fast. I'm assuming you know this. So this would be 5 comma 40. This would be 10 comma 80. 15 comma 120. Remember X and Y, right? 20 and 160. All right, so 10, 80. 15, 120. And then 20 would be 160. Notice it's linear. The graph is linear, so it's a straight line. So we have a constant rate of change. So notice that when we look at this constant rate of change, it doesn't matter between what point that we go to. It has a constant rate of change. Because look, I'm going up. It looks like I'm going up 40. And then when I go over, I'm going over 5. Remember our constant rate of change? And no matter what I do, I'm going up another 40. And I'm going over 10 to 15, another 5. I'm going up 40 because I'm going from 120 to 160, so up 40. And I'm going over 15 to 20 is 5. So the constant rate of change is going to be 40 over 5, which we know is 8 over 1. Now if I were to look at, now we also reduce this, right? So if I were to split this into 1, and this is about 8. Where this meets right here, this is 8. This is where the unit rate or the unit price is. It's where x equals 1 is where you find the unit rate. So look, if I go to my graph, this should be 8. So you can tell from a graph if you see, if you look at on a graph where x is 1, you're going to find the unit rate or the unit price. If you wanted to, you can also find the unit rate by dividing your, your when you do your, your rate of your change in y over your change in x and get the denominator equal to 1. So notice that in the graph, the unit rate is 1, 8. This is your x, this is your y. It's where your x equals 1. This is also where the unit price is. So what does this mean? What this is, does this mean? It means for every one car, it cost $8. That's what it means. That's how you would interpret it. All right, let me get rid of this so you can box that in if you can see. All right, so what does, I want to know, what does 5 comma 40 mean if I looked at the graph? What does 5 comma 40 mean? Well, what does that mean? It means 5 cars. Remember, the X is cars, and the Y is the cost in money. 5 cars cost $40. Similarly, if I asked you what does 00 mean? It means 0 cars cost $0. 
You have no cards, no dollars, right? All right, let's do some more work with this. So I'm gonna turn my page. All right, let's try an example using distance and time. This time what I'm gonna do is I am going to give you the table, okay? So example two. And this time it's gonna go this way. Remember, tables could go vertically or they could go horizontally. All right, so this is gonna be, um, this is gonna be my X, this is gonna be my Y. This is gonna be hours, so time, and this is gonna be miles. So this is time, this is distance. All right, so zero, zero, one, 60, two, 120, three, 180, and we'll stop there. Okay, so I want us to find the constant rate of change from the table. So the constant rate of change, if they give it to you in a table, there's two things you can look at here. They actually gave us a clue here. Clue number one would be to find where the unit rate is if you can see it. This is the unit rate. The unit rate is where x equals one. This is gonna be your constant rate of change. But let's go through the process. It's your change in y over your change in x. All right, so let's do it. All right, so here's your y. You're going up 60, up 60, up 60. And over here we're going up one, up one, up one. So the constant rate of speed is 60 over one. This represents hours, this represents miles. So this is 60 miles per hour. This is the constant rate of change. It's also the unit rate. Now, if they gave us a graph, only the graph, and they asked you what's the constant rate of change, find where x is one, right? So the constant rate of change on a graph, find where x equals one and read it over. All right, so in our example here, we have zero, zero, and it looks like we're going what? One, two, three, going by mile. Uh, this is hours, this is miles. Now let's go by 60, so let's make it easy on ourselves. Um, 240, here we go. All right, so zero, zero, one and 60, two and 120. Two and 120, three and 180, sorry. <laughs> All right, notice it's linear. The graph is a straight line, so we know we have a constant rate of change. This is where the constant rate of change is. This is the unit rate. So if you read across, it's also the constant rate of change. So this would be the point one comma 60. So you could find the constant rate of change at a number of different places. All right, so here's a question for you. What does zero, zero mean? So in our example, it means, now remember, X is hours, the Y is miles. You could look at that based upon this right here or go up to your table. All right, so what does that mean? You go zero miles, in zero hours. If I asked you, what does two comma 120 mean? What does that mean? It means in two hours, you travel 120 miles. If I asked you, what is the constant rate of change? Constant rate of change is where X equals one. So if you read over, it's 60. A lot of different things we can look at. Okay, so what I would like for us to do is I'd like for us to look at this worksheet right now. And we're just gonna do a couple together to find the constant rate of change and we're gonna graph them. So let's look at the babysitting example. So remember, the constant rate of change is your change in Y over your change in X. It's also gonna be where X equals one. So can you see it right now? 
You can see it right now. The constant rate of change should be 6 over 1. I want you to look in different places. You also, if they just gave you the graph, you can find where it's 1. All right, so the change in y over the change in x. So it looks like we're going by 6s, up 6, right? Increasing by 6. And this is money. And the, this is money, and this is ours. And it looks like this is increasing by 1. So this would be $6 for one hour. So if I graph this, 1 and 6, 2 and 12, 3 and 18, 4 and 24. It has a constant rate of change, therefore the graph is linear. Now also notice this is also where you see the constant rate of change. The constant rate of change is also where it's your unit rate. The unit rate is $6 for one hour. One more? All right, let's do number two. All right, so it's your change in Y over your change in X. All right, you could see it right now. See where X equals one? If this is your X, this is Y. It should be $15 over one, but let's go through the process. So it looks like our change in our y is increasing by 15 each time. So 15 dot, this is what, rental? Yep, it's money. So this is money and this is ours again. So this is 15 over, and it looks like this is increasing by one. So this is $15 for one hour, which is what we saw because we saw where x is one. So let's graph it. One in 15, two in 30, taking it from here, right? 3 and 45, 4 and 60. It's linear, constant rate of change, $15 per hour. Also, notice you can see it from here. You can see it from here. Where x equals 1 is going to be your constant rate of change. It's also going to be your unit rate. All right. One last thing I'd like to do with you guys is I would like for you to go to workbook page 68, and I'd like for us to look at this example because it's comparing constant rates of change. One is in a graph, one is in a table. So go to page 68, pause the video. All right, let's read this. The table and graph below show the hourly charge to rent bicycles at two different stores. Which store charges more? All right, so they gave us, they gave us pedals rental and they gave us super cycles, two different rentals. All right, so in order to compare them, you're gonna find the constant rate of change. And then you could compare them, right? We're going to find the constant rate of change. So it's your change in Y over your change in X if you have a table. All right, so look, it's going up 12. So it's going to be $12 over 1. Notice they didn't give us 1 here. That's right, we can figure that out. All right, now here, honestly, the best way is to read where x equals 1. So if I read where x is 1, x is 1 here, it's right here, and then we go over, it's 8. So this is $8 for one hour. So who charges more? Pedals Rental charges more.